welcome to my second lecture on linear dynamical systems. Today we'll be talking about a predator prey model in detail. So we'll be talking about its construction, its analysis and its graphing, the phase portraits. And the best way to understand a, an applied mathematical model is to observe it. So let's start by visiting a beautiful beach where we will observe uh, some beautiful predators and preys establishing a life cycle with each other. And that'll be a good start for today's lecture. Let's once more visualize what we mean by a solution X of our autonomous or a non-autonomous dynamical system. Geometrically, the trajectory X is a parametric curve in the phase space. And what we mean by dx dt equals fx is that along any trajectory, fx points in the forward direction because it is the tangent at any instant t to the trajectory and the speed of xt would be the magnitude of f. Now the phase space is squared with orbits or trajectories in this way and uh, we must acknowledge that these solutions are all unique. They do not intersect with each other. They do not even self intersect which means that they do not cross themselves as well. And the collection of all such orbits or trajectories is what we call a phase portrait which you can see in the diagram. It is a simple phase post portrait of a simple non-autonomous dynamical system defined by dx dt equals xt x times t with an initial condition um, of x not equal to minus 1 corresponding to t equal to 0. Now the differential equation is uh, pretty straightforward and simple and separable can be easily solved by separating the variables and you can see that uh, it turns out to be minus e to the t squared on 2 to be the trajectory formed by this dynamic, dynamical system and the negative sign clearly indicates that all orbits must point downwards. And that enables us to draw a portrait of our Lotta Volterra system. And there you are. We talked about this predator prey relationship in our first lecture. Today we'll throw some more light on this um, by talking about their interaction, their mutual interaction, by modeling the number of predators and preys um, in a way uh, such as we could know when a predator preys on the other species, how it affects the number of that species and uh, how the number of prey impacts the number of predators. The combination of these two interactions actually created changes in their respective populations. So we will be talking about uh, their relationship and try to describe the shape of the predator prey graph. Now this graph is um, in principle due to two scientists, Alfred Lotka and Vita Volterra, who worked on this relationship so hard that based on their work, two scientists in physiology and medicine, Hodgkin and Huxley in 1963, based their research on this work and won the Nobel Prize. Quantitatively, we can say that if there are no foxes, then dx dt would be a proportion of x. Now, we are considering the populations of rabbits and foxes to be large enough 
so that they are smooth functions of time. So we come back to the point. Analogously, if there are no rabbits, then dy dt would be a proportion of y, which means that in, in the absence of foxes, rabbits will grow depending only on their own population. And in the absence of rabbits, foxes will decrease um, depending on their own population. But there's something to think about here. Is it realistically possible that there are no foxes or there are no rabbits? That will be too ideal to think about. Okay, so let's consider the non-ideal case, the realistic case, where there will always be some foxes and some rabbits. So we define our equations by adding a factor uh, in each of them and uh, equation 1 and 2 represent um, the factors of bxy and axy in respectively uh, 1 and 2 which shows the relative rate of um, increase in the population of foxes in number 1 uh, represented by uh, uh, sorry, it's number 2, represented by Ax, and that rel relative rate of increase in foxes occurs uh, due to the availability of food. While in number 1, there is a factor representing a relative rate of decrease in the population of um, rabbits due to predation by foxes. Precisely what's happening here is that we have chosen the constants a and b to be zero in our uh, new relative equations. And what happens is that um, since x becomes an exponential of t and y becomes an exponential of a negative um, fraction of t, what happens when t approaches to infinity is that x starts increasing indefinitely and y eventually comes down to zero, which is uh, not the realistic case because rabbits cannot grow uh, exponentially and indefinitely. Um, that can only happen when there are no uh, foxes. And fo foxes can never be uh, zero if the rabbits are there. They will definitely increase. So uh, we are therefore adding the factor, the, the factor of uh, minus by and uh, the factor of ax into respectively the change in the number of rabbits in foxes. We talked about the first integral of a dynamical system uh, previously, which can be written in the form dx dt equals um, f of t and x, where x itself is a function of t, which yields a first integral of the form uh, some function phi of t and all the components of x involved. Um, and we also said that it will be the first integral only when it turns out to be a constant. And we call that constant k. Now, following this rule, if we write the equation of a lotka terrace system um, in the matrix form, and uh, we consider the right-hand side to be an autonomous system, fx, then uh, it, taking the initial value of x as x0 corresponding to x0, y0. And let me remind you here that for the lotka volterra system, we are considering two-dimensional dynamical uh, system equations. Then we can say um, that k will obtain the form uh, beta ln x minus ax plus alpha ln y minus by. I claim that this is a first integral of the lotka volterra system and I leave it to you to please verify that it is actually a constant. The phase portrait of uh, the system is shown on the right hand side. Now we look at this model that um, I had shown you in my first lecture, just a glimpse of it, um, in which there is the, this is the predator and prey population growing and rising uh, when one population falls and the other grows. In this case, we are assigning certain uh, values to our variables to draw the graph. And that's what you see, is there for A, B, alpha and beta.
However, we can still have an equilibrium state for both the predators and the prey uh, by choosing certain values of our constants that bring the peaks of the two systems as close as possible. For example, as uh, you can see here, uh, the predators are quite relaxing. At this point, they don't seem to be hunting. So if we, if we can consider a small interval of time, which could be as small as like say 10 seconds, then uh, we can assume that at this point, there will be no hunting and there will be no killing of the prey. And so the populations uh, of the predators and the prey within these uh, small five seconds will stay the same. We'll be now looking at the equilibrium points of Lotka Volterra system quantitatively. And we know that um, we uh, consider a point Xe to be an equilibrium point of um, a system if it gives rise to a constant solution. That is, it is the solution of the system dy uh, dx dt equals fx when it's equal to zero so that it could give rise to a constant or a horizontal curve. So we consider our Lord Cavalteras system and um, we uh, sort out the equilibrium points of one and two. Actually, I want you to grab a pen and paper and do it with me. So if you put dx dt uh, equal to zero and dy dt equal to zero, then you will note that the only equilibrium points that come forward are either the pair xy equal to zero, zero, or the pair alpha beta having the value by ax respectively. And the solution turns out to be beta times ln x minus ax plus alpha times ln y minus by. And how uh, we claim that this is the constant solution, I will take you back a few slides where I actually asked you to verify that. I'm sure you, you would have done that. Um, you can uh, verify it a bit further if you look at my work carefully and see how I have made use of the world famous chain rule. <laughs> introducing the canonical form of a dynamical system, uh, a non-autonomous system, dx dt equals fxt, by defining new variables, y as uh, the system that accommodates x and t as a matrix, and uh, the function g of this new variable y, which we define as the matrix with its first component as fxt and the second component a constant for um, the sake of uh, convenience, we are taking it equal to 1. Now, if x solves 4, then y solves uh, the new autonomous system that we have defined in blue. And the new system um, can be definitely differentiated with respect to t because it is a function of x and t. So I can define dy dt as the matrix dx dt in 1 and dx dt we know is our fxt um, and this whole new system is actually a g of y. So please note here that we started off with a non-autonomous system in equation 4 and we have come forward to equation 5 turning it into an autonomous system. So we can claim that it is probably sufficient to start off with an autonomous system and try to solve it. We'll be talking about it in very detail in the next lecture, lecture three, in which we will um, actually solve um, an autonomous system to get to the solutions of the non-autonomous system that corresponds to it. Let's now consider a few examples here of vibrating systems. 
as uh, dynamical systems. The first example I'm looking at is an undamped uh, uh, pendulum equation, which is uh, x double dot plus omega squared sine x equal to zero. We are considering its vibrations for omega equal to two in the corresponding figure. And now we look at a dynamical system that corresponds to this equation, which is dx dt equals y and dy dt equals minus omega squared sine x. And you can um, observe that dy dt is simply d squared x by dt squared. So it's not that hard. And um, correspondingly, we have shown you the phase portrait of the system with omega equal to 1 and multiple initial conditions applied to the system. And now we are considering the damped system in which there is a factor of 2a times x dot that ensures damping. And we are running uh, the show with a equal to 1 and omega acquiring the values between minus 5 and 5 here. And this is the phase portrait of the system and the corresponding dynamical system uh, dx dt equals y and dy dt equals minus 2 dx dt minus omega squared sine x. You can easily verify that it satisfies the system. And that's all for today's lecture. I hope you enjoyed it. Please get in touch with me by subscribing to the channel for your feedback as well as uh, to be notified for all the new stuff that is in the pipeline. In the next lecture, I will be talking about um, the equilibrium points of a dynamical systems in detail, which means that I'll be talking about their classification in terms of their eigenvalues. Have a good one.